Hey there everybody, good morning, welcome. It is time for another installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. This morning we are talking about chasing the bright shiny things. Or, oh look, a squirrel. Stay tuned. This is 7 Minutes in the Morning, where five days a week you get tips and hacks dedicated to helping business owners and leaders just like you find and break through the one thing that is preventing your success. And now, here's the host of 7 Minutes in the Morning and your results coach, Tom Rigsby. Oh, hey everybody, good morning. It's a good morning already. Hey, uh, thank you so much for being here. When you get here, whether you're watching live or on the replay, do what Sarah and Catherine and Joe have already done. Leave a comment. Say hi, good morning, how you doing, where's the chicken? Chicken's on its way. That's what I was laughing about. I just as soon as I hit go live, Vicky was sitting on the couch over here and said, Did you bring the chicken out? No. So she's gone to get the chicken. So the chicken will be back before we get done today. Hey, uh, so I hope you are having a great day. I had a great week. Today is Friday. That means it's free coaching Friday. Time to stump the coach. If you have a question, topic, or comment you would like to try and stump me with, put that right over here in the comments so that I can uh, see it and maintain my 100% success rate so far. I've yet to be stumped. Oh, I hear it. <laughs> Chicken's getting closer. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and put that in, in the comments and I will get to that after today's topic, which Catherine should recognize today's topic because it's based on one of her quotes. When your confidence isn't founded in focus and purposeful action, then you are jumping without a parachute. That was a, uh, a quote that she, or a comment that she made in one of our earlier conversations. I told you you should um, pay attention that that was going to come up. So, so, and that might be the next great quote right there, Catherine. Chicken, squirrels, and birds, distractions <clears throat> by any name will still keep you from doing the things you know you're supposed to do. When it gets really insidious, though, is when we're doing things that we call progress. So, oh man, I can't see it right there. Here, I better hold it. There, chicken's back. Um, a lot of times we'll have something that we know we need to get done and it's it's either scary, it's big, uh, and in keeping with our theme this week you have a lack of confidence about being able to successfully navigate that thing so you distract yourself by doing other things, right? So I'm working on a project right now and a little side project uh, with some software and the big thing that needs to be done with it is putting the paywall on it so that or not even really a paywall it's a pay button so people can click the button and pay money for using it and yet it's really easy for me to say well I need to fix this first I need to get that working first I need this feature done first and get distracted on those things when what is there is sufficient and just need to take the time and, and you know the, there's a whole series of things that need to be done in order you know to handle money and that's complicated so it's really easy for me to distract myself with other things and that happened I think that happens to a lot of us um, yeah Catherine says busy doesn't equal purposeful that's actually a really good indicator when when you ask someone how they're doing or someone asks you and you say well I'm busy mm, busy is not a good um, measure of success the hamster in the wheel is busy he's just not going anywhere so all right so let's see Joe says defining the fear is the first step no oh, I, I that will diminish its control yeah I had to read that a second time yeah, so we can be afraid of, what, what are we really afraid of? What is the fear? Where does fear come from? Right? All fear is rooted in uncertainty. 
all fear is rooted in uncertainty. Um, yeah, I'll stick with that. All fear is rooted in uncertainty. So if we are uncertain of the outcome, then we will will have some fear and trepidation about going into taking on that particular uh, project, right? But if we if we name it, say here's here's what it is. This is what I'm afraid of. Well, now all of a sudden, it, it's not as scary anymore. It's almost like now that you know what you have to look for. It, okay, here's a better example. Going into a spook house, right? If somebody tells you before you go in, yeah, that third room, this guy's going to jump out of the closet. That's the scariest thing in the whole place. Well, now you know what to look for. Right? So everything else that you see is all of a sudden less scary. The guy jumping out of the closet might still be scary. But it, at least now you know what to look for. And I, I think Joe's spot on with that. Once you can identify the thing that is making you, that, that's giving you that, that, pause then it's much easier to proceed you're not having to scan the whole field looking for threats you I mean you're looking for this threat and you know how to how to find it exactly Catherine that's exactly what we talked about yesterday if you are afraid or overwhelmed just start with a little bit take the smallest thing that you can take control of right and make that decision. I think I think it was yesterday I recommended Mel Robbins book Five Second Rule. But in uh, in in her life, in her experience, the thing that she had the most control over, felt like she had the most control over was the snooze button on the alarm clock. Maybe it's as simple as that. Just getting up provides lots of opportunity. But but moreover, being able to get up when you intend to get up. When you, if you set an alarm, you have an intention of getting up at that time. Being able to meet that intention is a measure of control. Doing that is a measure of success. That gives you some dopamine, a little dopamine hit in your brain, and you keep doing it. And you do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again. Right? Cliff says prioritizing, and by the way, hey Cliff, good to see you. Prioritizing tasks is also key. M my perspective on prioritizing is a little different than, than most. I believe you hit the day with only five things on your to-do list. And of those five, only one is your real priority. It's kind of an 80-20 rule. You know, 80% of your results come from 20% of the effort. Of a five-item to-do list, 20% equals one thing. You, you identify that one thing. If you do that one thing, then today's a win. If you do everything else plus 20 more and you don't get that one thing done, today's a loss. But that's okay. Either way, tomorrow's a new day. And you have to win or lose the new day on its own merit, not based on what happened today. Right? But you are correct. And you've got, you know, you've taken uh, a software project on also. <coughs> Prioritizing, it, it's as much about understanding what's necessary, what's required versus all the things you could do. Could I create a, um, a, a, a website, a community that had hundreds of, of topics and lots of content, lots of pictures? Yeah, I could. And I could wait to launch it until all that's done or I can just start doing it one at a time. And then, you know, after a year, if I do this every day, after a year, I'll have 220 pieces of content up. Well, that's not a bad plan. And one of the things, that, you know, this is a little bit of a bunny trail, and whew, I'm over and we'll have to wrap it up. We look at other people and where they are and think, wow, you know, they've got 400 pieces of content. I actually, I think it's 330-something, or I don't know, 353. Today will be 354. Um, videos that are up on YouTube. Oh, wow, that's a lot. Yeah, it's taken me years to do that. All right, you, you get there overnight. So, identify something that you can execute on today. M make sure that it moves you toward your goal. Here and, and look, here's the idea. Once you get those five things 
on your to-do list. Of those five, which one has the greatest impact toward moving you toward your goal? Make that your priority. I don't know, just a thought. You have to define how you will prioritize because if it doesn't work for you, then you won't work it. Well, you're right, yeah. I knew the book was coming up there, Kathy. So, um, if it doesn't work for you, then it won't work. Every system is that way, right? So, my, just like when we're talking about time management, my admonition is get it out of your head, into your system, trust the system. I don't care what the system is. Now, I will suggest one. You know, this P4F model that I just described, that's the system I would, dis I would suggest. But if there's a better one for you, then you should use it. Just make sure that, the, as you point out, the system is working for you, not you working for the system. All right, great conversation this morning. Great uh, comments and input there. Thank you all so much for that. I really appreciate you being here today. If you got value from our time together today, do two things for me. Number one, leave the hearts, thumbs up, like, stars, whatever's appropriate in the venue where you are watching or listening. And speaking of which, don't forget, if you can't watch the video, you can always listen to it on your favorite podcast catcher, iTunes, uh, Stitcher, Spreaker, all of those, Google Play, um, soon to be on Spotify. And you can also listen to it on TuneIn Live or on the replay. And uh, number two, so leave those hearts, thumbs up, and likes. And number two, one person that you know that could benefit from listening to our conversation today, share this video with them or this uh, podcast with them. They will appreciate you for sharing that content. I will appreciate you for uh, connecting me with a new friend. So we're all happy. It's a win-win-win. All right. It is Friday. That means it's the weekend. So I won't talk to you for the next two days. You have a great weekend. Come back Monday. Rest relaxed and rejuvenated. Rest and relaxed and rejuvenated. So that we can hit the ground running. Until then, you guys have a fantastic weekend. I'll talk to you later.